So it's a, a great pleasure to be here uh, and talk about my passion and talk about developing medicines. And I don't very often get the chance to present this company anymore because we've actually moved from Sweden to the Netherlands. And since I'm here in Lund, uh, this was a unique opportunity and, and I, I, I couldn't resist. So Amplio Pharma, um, delivering validated medicines amplified. Uh, and that's really why we're called Amplio Pharma. Amplio, because we do find good medicines that are validated and that delivers already good value, um, but that then has something that doesn't really work perfectly. And we amplify them. We make them better. So our mission is to combine, combine sustainable drug development with affordable pharmaceutical healthcare for an ever-expanding aging population. Sustainability, uh, making sure that a lot of people can actually get access to medicine is one of our core sort of aims. Um, and, and I think that's something that is, I see from more and more companies that people are starting to think about this. We cannot just think about getting the highest price for our drug. Our history then, I wanted to say a few words. We started the company, um, actually the idea was cooked up in, in 2016. We filed the patents in 17. We started the company in 20 here in Lund and um, we actually transferred to Leiden, Netherlands in May last year. We're a team of three passionate female founders uh, with a long experience um, in pharmaceutical development. Um, we um, have now both in the US and in Europe um, patent protection for our amplified methotrexate. Um, we've won some prizes for sort of best startups, etc. But that I couldn't take the claim for that. Um, but we also have a whole set of, of data that we've actually generated internally uh, and that the um, ideas are built upon. So this is the team. Um, Marguerite Mencenides, she's our CEO and she's located mostly in Leiden. Uh, she's a pharmacist from the beginning with a long-standing um, experience from AstraZeneca as a medicinal chemist and as, as also a pharmacologist. Then it's me. Um, I'm mostly here in Lund uh, working with uh, Truly Translational and Truly Labs that um, I founded together with our third partner here, Charlotte Brunmark. And that's where you find us most of the time. Um, but this is really um, a project that builds on a lot of what we have been doing. We want to develop drugs, we want to do it in a sustainable fashion, and we want to deliver something that actually can make a difference uh, to people. Um, we're located, or we were located in the Öresund region. Uh, commercial advisors then, of course, have to be from Denmark. Henrik Fenninger has a super long experience with methotrexate and Lars Bokala. Gasmussen uh, is pharmacology veterinarian. We've been able to recruit a lot of good KOLs. And I start with the lower one, um, Robert Hausinger. I'm not very good at pronouncing his Dutch name, uh, but he's uh, really a key person in ULAR committees, etc. And he's a real fan of what we're doing. Joel Kramer and, and Michael Weinblatt are came on as KOLs when we got the US patent approved. And if you're in the area of rheumatoid arthritis, you probably know who these guys are. Joel Kramer also is a person who did uh, some of the groundbreaking scientific findings that are sort of we're basing our work on. So we moved from um, Lund to Holland and it's not only because Holland is a nice place to be. It's also because in Sweden, we were not able to really raise a big interest. When I come, or when Marguerite or Lotte come and say, metotrexate, people say, hmm, John, John. Uh, when we go to Holland, P 
people are actually interested. There's many different groups working uh, at the universities in prestigious groups, clinical groups, scientific, translational, who do research and who are really excited about this molecule and what it can do. We also found available funding and a development uh, team for our clinical development. And, oh, I thought there was a, yes. Um, let's see, so right now I'm, for example, working with Naomi to develop our clinical protocol. Um, this I'm not going to spend a lot of time. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, there is, there is a, a big market and metotrexate is the first line therapy. So it already holds a big position. Um, and that's what we are intending to take our part of. So how do I see this amplifying metotrexate? What do I mean? So metotrexate is actually a prodrug. And if you're not into metotrexate biology, this is something that you may not know. You just think that it's a drug and it's, um, yeah, it used to be um, quite toxic and then people got the hang of how to, to use it. And it's actually now very safe and efficacious in about 40% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. It, it, it's a very good drug. Then there's, of course, 60 other percents that we could potentially uh, take part of that share as well. So I told you that Joel Kramer did some initial work on um, understanding the biology of why and how metotrexate works. So it's a prodrug, and what happens is it's getting polyglutamated. You put on these polyglutamates and it gets a long tail. And the more polyglutamates you get coupled to your metotrexate molecule, the more effective it becomes. In many of the patients that do not respond very well, actually what you can see is that you, you never get to this stage where the metotrexate is really able to work at its best. What we have found is a formulation that actually pushes this equilibrium towards the highly polyglutamated species. And by doing so, of course, we hope, this is what we need to prove, that the patients will respond as they currently do. And what do we base this on? Well, right now, there is um, a company in the US called Exogen, they actually have a test that's called a vice metotrexate. And that measures polyglutamated species in red blood cells of these patients. And what you can see is the ones, the patients that have a high level of polyglutamated species in their red blood cells, these ones are good responders. And then they can actually see, well, since it takes a very long time for you to to really get the full benefit of the metotrexate. If you're not one of these people, you may not, you may want to shift. And that's logical, and I think that's how it should be done. But this also tells us that there is quite a lot of data indicating that these polyglutamated species are really um, prognostics. So in Amsterdam, uh, we have found a, a group that works with refining this um, biomarker that, so that it can now also be used as an efficacy biomarker where you measure directly in the white blood cells of patients taking our drug and we can see if before they take our drug they are maybe somewhere here and that we can push it towards here. So, um, this is what we think we can do. We can uh, enhance treatment response, uh, increase a higher level of responders. We can uh, get a targeted and safer medicine and cost-effective healthcare. And in this clinical trial that I'm <coughs> designing currently together with Naomi and Marguerite, we will actually be able to, already in the first phase one study, 
get a proof of principle or maybe even proof of concept through this biomarker studies. So with that, I think I'm almost done. Um, I think there, there is an attractiveness in being a Dutch company that actually makes money multiply. Uh, and that's why I would say, if you're interested, even though we're now a Dutch company, come talk to me, uh, because we are raising money and could actually be a very good and nice global investment. With that, thank you very much for your attention. And I will be here today if anybody wants to talk to me. And Marguerite will be here tomorrow. So please go and talk to her. Thank you so much, Karin. Um, well, we do have a, a few questions here for you. Um, first of all, what are some of the benefits of being a Dutch company? So first, we, we actually moved to, to Holland because there was this scientific interest. So for us, it was a match between our project and the science base and interest. Um, but what we figured out when we, once we moved there was that there is actually a lot of incentives for companies building businesses in Holland that are formed a little bit different from how they are here. Mm. There's less IPOs. <laughs> <laughs> in, in small biotech there, um, and, and maybe that's why they've chosen a different model. Mm -hmm. um, along those lines, kind of, could, could you expand on your market strategy? I can expand on the market strategy a little bit, just looking at this one. Um, so the market strategy is we are intending to, to actually deliver a phase two um, proof of concept study and then partner with um, pharma companies that are actually, most of them that have shown interest are already in the business. Mm -hmm. And of course, they would really like um, for having this proprietary metatrexate formulation rather than having their competitors sitting on the same. Mm -hmm. So that's a, an exchange for uh, one, one drug uh, to a similar, but now better performing drug. Mm -hmm. Um, and how about your financing strategy? Could you tell us more about that? Yes. So, um, oh, I've been going the wrong way. Um, we, we are raising money. Um, so we currently have um, grants that we got from LEH, which is uh, associated with Leiden University. Mm -hmm. and, um, but we need to raise the money for the phase one. Uh, we have part of it, um, but we need a little bit more. <laughs> and we have a, a number of, of uh, people actually being interested. It works a little bit different. We are mostly interested in getting funding from angels, family offices, um, private investors, mm -hmm. uh, because the tickets are still rather small. Uh, and um, what we can see from talking to, for example, um, venture capital is that we're slightly too small and maybe slightly too early yet for them. Uh, well, I think we have time for maybe one more question. Um, you say your drug can amplify the clinical effect of methotrexate, benefiting 70% of RA patients instead of the current 30-40%, correct? Uh, what is preventing the reach to 100%? A couple of things. First of all, uh, being realistic. <laughs> yeah. um, I think when, when we, um, not everybody will respond to the same therapy. Mm. Um, and I think although um, RA is not maybe as heterogeneous a disease as some of the others I've worked with, like COPD, or uh, it, there's still nuances and there's still a variability in the, in the patient population. Um, I think the TNFs are really successful. In many countries, TNFs, for example, are given together on top of metotrexate. Mm -hmm. That's not so commonly done here, but that's actually the guidelines uh, in most of Europe, for example. And it also helps prevent uh, development of um, autoantibodies towards the anti-TNFs, for example. So there's a, I, I, I would say that um, there's also some 
patients that actually cannot tolerate methotrexate, mm. uh, and that we know, uh, and those should not get it. So there will never be 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but it could actually be quite close if you think of this, that you combine with, first you go on methotrexate alone, and then you combine it also when you get into the biologics, mm -hmm. as it's currently prescribed. Mm -hmm. Still, the uh, the extra benefit is is quite significant there. So, um, well, thank you so much, Karin, for your presentation and for answering the questions. Yeah, and thank you for all the nice questions. <laughs>